welcome everyone to CCRI's first virtual Path Days. Today is Path Day for Arts and Humanities and Communication Media in Film. This session is to meet faculty from Arts and Humanities areas. And in just a moment, I'll be introducing our faculty guest. But first, let's take a look at the Arts and Humanities pathway. You are inquisitive, inspired, and creative. You are a thinker, a historian, a writer, pondering where we've come from and where we're going. You enjoy engaging others, learning about their culture, and communicating with them in their own vernacular. Using clay, language, pen, or musical instrument, you love the process and the act of creating for yourself and others. Whether theater, literature, languages, music, history, art, or philosophy, you will find a career in the Arts and Humanities path. Now I'd like to introduce Professor Beth Anish. Beth, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Yes. And you're a professor in the English department. Yeah. And so tell me, what classes do you teach in English? I teach writing classes and literature classes. So I teach the college writing, which is English 1005, English 1010, which is composition one, and then a, at least four literature classes, intro to lit, readings in the short story, multicultural American literature, and I've taught the um, literature of imagination and fantasy class a couple times too. Great, thanks for that list. Now, what programs are those classes a part of at CCRI? So it's kind of an easy question and a big question for us because the English courses are required for every program at CCRI, the writing classes especially, um, depending on your placement. If you place into English 1010, the Comp 1, then that might be the only English class you take for, for certain associate's degrees, but it is usually required. Uh, English 1005 is the one right before that, so if you place into that, you'll need to take that class. And it also counts as a humanities elective, which all of our literature classes count as humanities electives as well, and upper level writing if you choose to go beyond comp one. So they're all over the place, um, some required and some elective in most programs. Thank you. What drew you to teaching in, in this field, in English writing and literature? Well, I was an English major as an undergraduate. I'd say going back much further than that, I always loved reading and writing since I was a little kid. So it's always been kind of my natural inclination. Um, my favorite class always was English um, since high school, I would say. And just, I did a few things first before I came to teaching. I actually worked in college career services and admissions and in those roles was using my writing skills and um, communication skills, presentation skills, all of which come from taking lots of classes that have to do with communicating and reading and writing. Now, speaking of each of those courses, since it's everyone in the whole college, essentially, what attributes do students who are successful in your courses share? Well, some of them do love to read and write already coming into the classes, but that's not necessarily uh, a prerequisite for, for our classes or for doing well at our classes. I think um, more so it would be students who are willing to take the time to read closely, to do all their reading assignments, to um, not just like write a paper the night before it's due, but to think about um, pre-writing and drafting and revising and all the things that we teach in our college writing and composition courses. Uh, so it's really about time and effort. And I think some students do say to me, oh, you know, I was never good at English and that kind of thing. But if they're willing to take the time um, to put in the work, they usually do just fine and sometimes surprise themselves with um, how well they can do in an English course. Now, you mentioned that writing courses are part of just about every major, if not every major. Why mm -hmm. should students in every major take writing courses? 
Well, as you know, just we were just talking the other day about some of the uh, attributes that employers want to see from our graduates and communication skills, writing skills, critical thinking skills, all of these things are part of our classes. They're what we do. Uh, so having students and then CCRI graduates who are ready to go into the workplace and can communicate effectively, uh, can think about problems in, in critical and analytical ways, uh, you're, you're already off to a good start if you can do those things. So in writing classes, um, we're teaching you how to construct an argument, for example, and how to look for evidence to support your position and how to string all that evidence together in support of a position, uh, how to clearly write your sentences to communicate your ideas. So you need this no matter what field you're in. Um, and even beyond those things, I think ways of looking at the world, um, our literature classes, you know, we take on issues of gender and race and um, all sorts of hot topics that are covered in stories that can be a few hundred years old even. You know, so we're always looking at these things and analyzing how do we find ideas in the text, how do we support that. That crosses so many different career fields that um, we in the English department think everybody should take literature classes as well um, to help them develop those critical and analytical skills. Well, let's speak specifically about those in humanities, especially literature courses. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what exactly does um, a humanities course, especially a literature course, add to say a STEM student's education? Well, that's a great question. And I do think it's that different way of looking at the world. You know, a STEM student is looking at conducting research in a certain way and running experience, experiments maybe, and using data to back up what um, their conclusions are. And we're really doing that in literature courses too, but the evidence instead of in experiments or scientific, um, you see how far out of my realm I am in that, <laughs> um, or mathematical equations, the evidence is in the text. You're digging into those texts to find, um, you know, your interpretation to back up your interpretation of what's being said in there. And again, I think a STEM student, a STEM graduate, even if that person's working in computer science or wherever else, is going to have to interact with people. And I like to tell our students in literature classes, you know, especially students who come in and they're like, oh, I'm studying psych or I'm studying um, nursing or whatever, where, you know, they're characters, they're fictional on a page, right? But they have real human attributes that I think we can kind of almost hone our people skills by thinking about what motivates people, why people behave the way they do. Uh, so I love to look at that stuff in literature as well. And I will say I'm married to a STEM person, my husband's in computer science, and the fact that he can write and communicate has served him really well in his role. His favorite thing to do would be coding, but um, he's now in management and he needs to write employee evaluations and he needs to talk to all different constituents at his company and be able to express himself. So again, just a plug for English courses in general. <laughs> we teach all those things, except the coding that you get elsewhere. Um, and our last question before we open it up to students who have joined us. Uh, what advice do you have for current CCRI students unsure about their major right now? First, I wanna say it's normal. So um, don't stress too, too much uh, about not knowing immediately exactly what you wanna do. But um, I think these career pathways are a great idea because even if you just have a general idea of what you're interested in, what you like learning, and maybe what your strengths are as a learner, you could probably find a pathway that, that makes sense for you. So um, beyond that, I think talking to career and academic advisors, 
is important, you know, maybe there and just probably knows more about this than I do what's available at the college in terms of like skills and interest inventories and that kind of thing um, to help you start to maybe narrow that down. But I think a good place to start is what you like. Um, I have a daughter who's a freshman in college right now and a son who's a senior in high school and they're both kind of exploring these things too. What's been their favorite classes? Um, you know, and honestly, my daughter's going in like four different directions at the same time. <laughs> and she's just trying to figure out how to put all these things together that she likes. Um, but the other thing I will say about that is there are loads of jobs out there that we probably don't even know exist or, you know, unless we see them often where we don't know um, that these things are out there. So I think just following a pathway that has things that are of interest to you, you're going to figure out the career piece eventually as you discover more. Thank you. And that's really important. And to speak to what you mentioned before, uh, that, that interest inventory or that mm -hmm. career survey, uh, is called my majors is the main is the the main one we use at CCRI and okay. on for the students in here as well on the virtual path days page in the on demand library we actually have a link to my majors and a link to a tutorial video specific for CCRI and how we use that assessment and how our career coaches and our career services office uses that to help guide students toward that and great a little later today uh, we'll be hearing from them about my majors and Handshake and the virtual job fair as well. So nice. something like a virtual job fair is nice to attend because then you can just find out, you know, you don't, don't necessarily need to apply for anything while you're there, but you can find out what all those jobs are. Um, and like you said, there's so many jobs that exist and we don't even know them yet. Um, right. You know, and, and tomorrow there will be more jobs that there weren't today. <laughs> so everything keeps expanding and... Um, whoever would have thought that, you know, contact tracing for a pandemic yeah. level virus would be, would be a viable career option right now, but right. it certainly is. So things change every day. Yeah. So I just wanted to open up uh, for uh, the students who have joined us here. Uh, see if you have any questions for Professor Beth Anish. And you're welcome to take yourself off of mute or post in the chat. While they're thinking about their questions, I just want to give an example. We, we were watching Jeopardy the other night, and one of the contestants was a story analyst, and they, he was on a few nights. So we were like, what? I was thinking, what is that? And then Alex finally asked him, what is that? And this guy gets to read books that come in to like a film company. Um, graphic novels, novels, whatever they are, he reads through them and he does basically book reports on them and passes them on to people who decide if they'll be made into films or not. And I was telling my daughter about that because it crosses a couple of her interests uh, in film writing and, and so on. And I thought, imagine, like, I had no idea this was a career that was out there and there it was, he's doing it, so. And that's something that won't go away, right? As long as yeah. there are books, as long as there are other forms of media, people will be looking to transfer them to another form. Yeah. Very cool. That, that, talk about a job where you just get paid to read books. That's... that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> course, she... Being an English professor is fairly close to that. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. We get to read lots of stuff. Yeah. Books and student writing, too. That's right. All right. Okay, well, I think that might be all of the questions we have for now, but I just wanted to share a little bit more with our students before we leave today. And that is uh, that you can learn more about arts and humanities and all of our academic and career paths at ccri.edu slash pathways. And there is also a virtual job fair coming up hosted right online on Handshake on Thursday, November 12th, 2020 from 10 to 1 p.m. And just like with my majors, Handshake 
There are tutorial videos and a link to the website for Handshake in the on-demand video, the on-demand library that is associated with Path Days that you can find through the same links that got you to this session today. And just a little later today at 2.30, we will hear from Career Services and a little bit more about these two events as well. But Professor Anish, I want to thank you very much for being with us today. And I would like to wish everyone a very good day. You're welcome. Take care, everybody. Take care.